Well, whether I'm vertical or whether I'm horizontal, I'm nowhere near in the top 20 uh, <laughs> in the Prime Minister's list. No, but I'm sure your, your advice, your, your counsel will be much sought after. So I'm, I'm sure the Prime Minister will come to you sooner or later for, for your ideas. Well, I'm giving up my ideas for free um, via social network. So his team's already reading it, I'm sure. Um, okay. I'm sure he, he, he might not like some of what I'm, some of what I'm saying, <laughs> but uh, it's all in good faith yeah, and, yeah. Um, and it's freely given. Yeah. So why don't we start off by, by talking about uh, the gesture from the Prime Minister, the fact that he wants to sit down and talk to the country's top uh, 20 billionaires for ideas and advice on how to deal with the situation. Right. Uh, well, um, given that they control a significant uh, percentage of the economy, um, in a way it's not surprising that the Prime Minister would want uh, their advice and also want their assistance. Um, there is actually a lot uh, that they can do to uh, help the Thai people. Um, they control much of the modern trade, for example. So if they were to collectively agree to reduce uh, prices in their stores, uh, that would all already be of uh, great benefit to, to the Thai public. Um, I'm sure there are other, con other contributions that, that they can make. So um, as I said, uh, they, uh, one of the problem is how much of the economy uh, the top 20 tycoons do actually uh, uh, control. Um, and um, but given that, it's not surprising that uh, the prime minister wants their help. You would do the same, right? If you were in a position to deal with the problem. Yeah, I, I mean, I would talk to the top twenty. I would talk to uh, the people. I talk to SMEs and small operators. Uh, I think it's time to hear everybody's views. And I think part of the prime minister's problem, frankly, was communication. Um, <laughs> I, the, the fact that he wants to talk to the uh, uh, the 20 tycoons is, is not a surprise, yeah. as I said, given how much they control of the economy. Uh, but I think the, uh, the, the, the way it was communicated um, made some people feel, well, why is he only talking uh, to the super rich? Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and also, I think it reflects the perception uh, that for the past five or six years since he's been in power, uh, he has been working already very closely uh, in economic affairs um, <clears throat> with the uh, Thailand's riches. Um, and in that period, they have gotten richer. Uh, the problem of income inequality uh, remains uh, with, with us Thais. So uh, I, I think that that was part of the uh, background problem um, uh, in terms of how that particular message was, was, uh, was received. Um, not least also, uh, the people who, who actually uh, desperately want the Prime Minister's attention at the moment are the um, small and medium-sized enterprises, uh, the SMEs, um, aside from the, the, uh, the general public who are uh, clearly suffering. The SMEs are struggling. They're struggling for, uh, with their cash flow. Um, they're struggling, obviously, because uh, almost uh, none of them are, are able to continue uh, to operate. Uh, during um, this period, uh, and for them, it's a matter of survival. Um, and mm -hmm. so far, it's, uh, none of the um, measures that have been announced has, has been proven to be effective for them. Uh, so I think that's a level of frustration yeah. uh, on the part of SMEs as well. And um, uh, so when the message came through that the Prime Minister wants to spend more time uh, with mm -hmm. the tycoons, uh, I guess some people feel sort of left out. So it's a message. That's a problem. <laughs> and if you were asked, I think I think I think it was a mood and tone. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So if you were asked, what would you like to tell the government? Um, well, what I've been saying to the government uh, from the start uh, is that primarily this is a cash flow issue, um, both in view of the uh, the general public and also from the uh, as I said from the perspective of the SMEs. Um, the, the large corporations, uh, we, we're all suffering, but the large corporations at least uh, have access to, uh, to capital, um, access to uh, financial uh, uh, you know, loans and so on and so forth, um, and arguably also access to the capital markets. But SMEs and, and, and the general public 
uh, they don't have similar access, um, nor do they have uh, similar uh, stored up uh, cash flow. Um, and, uh, and for them, therefore, it's a matter of survival. So any measures uh, that the uh, go government um, introduces uh, needs to address the issue of cash flow. Unfortunately, um, this hasn't happened. For example, for SMEs, um, we identified uh, three main costs that is depleting uh, their cash flow daily. The most important one is, is obviously payroll. Uh, the second one is um, uh, loan services. And the third one is rent. So we, we've suggested, for example, uh, that the government uh, come up with a policy not dissimilar to some other countries, uh, whereby they subsidize uh, salary payments, especially for SMEs. So for example, um, a cap of up to 6,000 baht per, per employee in return uh, for uh, a promise that uh, the employees are, are retained in employment. Uh, the second uh, policy proposal that we suggested um, with regards to uh, interest payments is that um, the government actually subsidized the payments uh, of interest, again, up to uh, a cap of uh, 30,000 baht for a period of three months. So that would help uh, reduce the, the um, uh, interest burden and cash burden uh, for SMEs and at the same time uh, retain cash flow uh, going into the financial institutions. And with regards to rent, again, um, it would have been very helpful if the government was to uh, provide clarity. Uh, for example, uh, that um, all landlords uh, should uh, cease uh, rental collection for a period of, let's say, six months. Uh, we saw similar uh, legislation introduced uh, during COVID in, for example, Germany and also in Singapore. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it would have been very helpful if it was done here. I see. So it, it looks like uh, you believe that uh, it's the SMEs that uh, are in the most dire condition that certainly needs the most attention from the government at this moment, right? Well, from a business perspective, yes. But, yeah. um, but also bear in mind, <clears throat> that if you, if you really want to ask uh, businesses for help uh, with regards to uh, employment retention, mm -hmm. you really don't want to go to the top 20 tycoons. You want to go to the SME because as we know, 90% uh, of high, high staff are employees of SMEs in this country. Uh -huh. um, and, and so they are at risk. And by helping SMEs uh, with their cash flow, um, what the government is also getting uh, in return is... Uh, is, um, is a con control on uh, the level of unemployment. So, yeah, I think the two most distressed groups uh, are, mm -hmm. one, the general public, and the government at least uh, is attempting to uh, reduce their uh, problems with uh, the 5,000 baht payment, but that's a separate issue with separate set of difficulties and problems. Um, but the other group uh, that I think need urgent assistance um, is the, uh, is the SME. Mm -hmm. Kun Ton, overall economic growth is not quite uplifting, especially after we listen to IMF has forecast, we may, fa we may be facing minus 6% this year. Is it beyond Almost your certainly, prediction? I reckon, yes. And what, what would happen in the medium term to revive the whole economy, not only in Thailand, but globally? Well, uh, before we talk about revival, I think we need to address the issue of survival. Um, and, and that's why I keep on uh, stressing the, the importance of, uh, of cash flow. Um, without cash, uh, you know, forget revival. We, 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 we need to talk about rebirth because uh, everybody will be bankrupt, I think, within, frankly, a month or two. Uh, so I, I think uh, keeping the engine going um, making sure that there's enough cash in the, in the till uh, for small operators is, is the key here. Now, uh, Thailand, uh, as, as you will have heard from the IMF, uh, looks to potentially suffer the most um, in, in Asia. It's actually, according to IMF forecast, uh, we, we are one of the worst hit countries in the world um, at, what, 6.7% this year and another 6% next year, potentially. Uh, and I think that's partly because uh, one, we were already weak going into COVID. Um, we were one of the slowest growing economies in, in Asia, even before um, uh, COVID-19 
uh, reared his head. And going out of it, uh, we are more exposed because we are one of the most open economies in Asia. Uh, we depend a lot on international trade. Uh, we depend hugely on tourism. Um, and both of those obviously are the, you know, the, the sectors that are going to be impacted uh, by um, the uh, reduce uh, global demand. So as compared, for example, to Indonesia, um, our domestic economy is less important to the overall picture than it is for them. Um, and so we're going to suffer more. And so, you know, what we need to do uh, in, in order to get, get out of this in a strong position uh, is first of all, most importantly, improve on our own productivity. And that's a lot of lessons to be learned uh, mm -hmm. from how we uh, we fared during COVID, uh, but also undeniably, uh, Thailand needs um, strong international trade, and we need uh, a return of um, confidence uh, amongst uh, our visitors uh, to revive our tourism sector. Uh, Kun Gon, the the COVID nineteen certainly came as a rude awakening. So, what kind of we think do you think we need in the aftermath of this crisis? I don't think we can go back to. Business as usual, and as many would would want. No, no, we can't. Um, well, let's first of all start with the government itself. Uh, I think a lot of lessons are to be learned. Um, mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's a few of us who've been talking a lot prior to COVID about the need to uh, uh, develop uh, government technology, what you know, GovTech, um, mm -hmm. which, which which essentially means uh, to uh, enable the government. Uh, to utilize digital economy in the way it uh, relates to the general public and the way it provides its uh, services to the general public. Um, and I think we've been found out, the fact that uh, we have been relatively inefficient uh, in the way we've, we've handled so many issues is largely down to the fact that uh, techno technologically, uh, the government is way behind the times. For example, um, if we had proper citizen data, uh, we wouldn't need uh, for 27 million citizens to register in order to receive uh, financial assistance from the government. The government would already know uh, who those in need are and would be able to automatically to transfer funds in, uh, to citizens' accounts without any need uh, for any kind of uh, registration. Or even the issue regarding the disappearance of um, surgical masks. Um, mm -hmm. If you look at Taiwan, uh, they were through IoT and through um, digital technology able to, to, to trace and track um, every face mask that was yeah, being manufactured so, mm -hmm. uh, in Taiwan um, and trace it to exactly which shops they go into and were able to um, organize a collection through set quota for each and every uh, citizen, Taiwanese citizen. Um, now, if we were able to do that, uh, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have the kind of problems that uh, we had. So um, developing digital technology uh, for the government, I think, is, uh, is an essential priority as a start. Mm -hmm. And Kun Gon, what do you like to recommend to entrepreneurs, small and medium-sized business who must be facing very tough, the toughest situation? What should they be doing, especially in the second half of this year? Well, again, it depends very much on the business you're in. Um, I've been spending quite a bit of time talking with the uh, hotel sector, the tourism sector. Um, and, and over there, I think the first thing you've got to be is you've got to be realistic. I think in every business you're in, um, you, you have to try to assess what, what your new normal might, might be. Um, if you were in the uh, cinema business, you know, what is the new normal? Are people going to feel comfortable going to see films in cinema theaters again? Um, do you need to create social distance within cinemas? Um, if you were uh, in the tourism sector, uh, what kind of, uh, when, do, when can you realistically expect a return of your tourists and where are they likely to come from? Well, obviously, I don't, I think we can pretty much write off this year's high season, unfortunately. Um, and if uh, tourists uh, do return towards the end of this year, they're almost certainly going to be from uh, fellow Asian countries rather, rather than from the Western countries. 
Um, given that, your strategy uh, needs to, to um, be adjusted appropriately um, and, uh, and, and, and prepare for, you know, different behaviors of your, of your customers, uh, whatever business you might be in.